Hey, welcome back. I'm so excited. Hopefully you just finished watching or you watched last week, myself and Raman coming on board to give you guys some nutritional tips, exercise tips. Um, you know, if you are already at an optimum state or you think you're at an optimum state, the information that Raman is going to share, because honestly, um, he's helping me getting ready, get ready for this incredible trip across Ireland. Um, he's helping me and he's helping Corrine. And I consider myself pretty versed in the world of health and wellness. I've been in it for a while, you know, studied quite extensively and hanging out with this guy. I'm learning at a deeper level things that just I had learned once, maybe studying, you know, when I was learning how to do massage and you understand how, you know, cells and energy and oxygen and iron and all these things play in the body. And then you go on to life, you know, and you implement them and you use them and then you tend to, because there's lots of information coming at you, including life at you, they can go to the side or they don't stay at the peak of mind. So for some of you, this is going to be remembrance. For some of you, you're going to have your jaw drop and go, oh my gosh, now I know why they say I should do this. And so anyways, in getting ready and prepared for this great, um, fun experience, um, I've been hanging with Raman. Raman has, um, like I said, I think I said it in the last video and maybe I'll say it again. For some reason in his past life, he's cleaning up some karma. He got stuck with me and Kareen. <laughs> his job is to work with us crazy ladies and get us ready to take on um, this really beautiful quest. But one of the things that we know about and that we probably don't delve into is we all know we need oxygen. So we talked a lot about, oh my gosh, such a great basis of cellular level um, information in the last video. We're now gonna talk about oxygen because we know we need some, you know, and how do you know how does oxygen work a little bit and how can we get more or get oxygenated even better um and even for me i know when raman's working with me he's like remember to breathe for me i i know breathing is important i know oxygen is important but for some reason when i start thinking about things or learning about things i catch myself catching my breath not a good thing to do and i'm going to even be more conscious of it after today so Raman, thank you for coming on and doing these, you know, nutritional health tips for people because it's so important. And um, can you please share with us why we should care about oxygen? <laughs> Hello, good morning again. I hope everyone uh, enjoying this beautiful day. So in follow up to the previous video uh, regarding to the energy uh, that is the vital for optimum health and regain it or boost it. Uh, I would like to continue the previous by a short uh, example that why oxygen is important for us. Uh, speaking of the energy, uh, we knew that we get our energy from uh, metabolic reactions from the food or har harvesting the food energy and convert it to the usable form of the energy in our body. So that being said, we cannot use the glucose directly and it must be converted to a form that it would be able to utilize in our body. So I, I, I'm gonna give you an example because it's very similar understanding or similar concept of the uh, uh, burning, uh, that the oxygen is play an important role in the burning. Uh, if we consider the internal combustion engines, so, the engine is unable to utilize the gasoline directly as a fuel, uh, and it must be uh, combined with the oxygen uh, and ignite with the spark to create an explosion. That explosion run the cylinders up and down to create that um, running the engine. So releasing the energy is a chemical uh, contract between the fuel and oxygen. So availability of the oxygen makes it happen that engine harvest energy stored in the fuel. Exactly same thing happening in our cells, in our body. So, That's so good. That is so good. I love that analogy, right? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. People think, oh, Deb, you're interrupting all the time. But no, it's so good, you know, as... Um, you know, that's such a simple way to look at it, how you need it, because, you know, when people, you know, you're saying to me, you know, you should breathe more, or people like you should breathe more, or you should pay attention to oxygen, you don't put it together, because it's like, you know, that you should be 
you know, not eating late at night, but here you are having popcorn. You know you should be, but sometimes you don't realize the function of something. You know you need it to breathe. I mean, oxygen would be a problem if we didn't have it. But when you put it together like that, where it's like the energy is not going to kick in unless this <clears throat> reaction happens within the body, just kind of drives it home, doesn't it? Correct. Yeah. So that being said, the oxygen is more most important nutrient for our health, for our uh, being alive, and do the basic functions and also survival. Most people fail to breathe completely and efficiently, that it causes the many problems and symptoms down the road in their life. Uh, so to maximize the oxygenation, we need to pay attention for both factors, for breathing deep enough and also in the right frequency. Also, there's another important thing is uh, how we're gonna deliver the oxygen from our lungs to the uh, cells to be able to use for energy production or burning the oxygen to release the energy in our cells. There is a, a there is a, another nutrition uh, micro or micro required to be available for such a delivery. Uh, the hemoglobins in the red blood cells that are kind of proteins uh, have this uh, duty to deliver the oxygen to the cells, but mm -hmm. also the availability of the iron, vitamin B12, folic acids, and unprocessed omega-3, omega-6, and nine essential fatty acids is very important to do the job, to have done the job. Okay, so stopping there a little bit. Um, okay, so now we know that there's this delivery system that helps and you're talking about iron and you're talking about B vitamins and you're talking about other things. Um, so people can kind of start to put it together. Like, you know, it's almost like fuel to the fuel. You know, it's like how this gets delivered. Um, so just stopping there a little bit um, and I know you're going to go into it, being able to, or maybe I don't want to cut you off too soon if there's more information on that, but um, where can people, you know, get this? Like, is this where supplements come in? Is this where exercise, deep breathing? Like, what are some of the ways that people can obviously exercise? I mean, this is your forte, right? But um, I mean, again, maybe I've cut in too soon. But it's very interesting to see the elements needed to have this oxygen work at its optimum. And here, most of us just think, oxygen is just breathing in and out, you know, or they, I, I remember when um, oxygen was uh, like people you could go and you could breathe in oxygen. And it was like, you know, like they, there was a big wave. I don't really see it anymore. If people had these places you could go and you could breathe in oxygen. Do you remember that? Those oxygen tank places. I don't see them around anymore. I don't know why. But um, so now we can start to begin to see how important it is to take care of what's needed to deliver that. Because, you know, and then we talked about energy in the last video. I mean, really, to have energy, you have to be breathing and have a good sense of oxygen. And where does that come from? And how can we do that? Huh? Absolutely. Uh, you mentioned in most of the important titles in this regards, but yeah. I will complete it with a few yeah. words. Uh, uh, let's start with the uh, intake. Okay. So. Uh, the most problem starts when there is a mite that we just need, uh, we have to get nutrition as we need it. Mm. But it is wrong because when we need something, I mean, when we are starving, when we feel thirst or when we feel we are so tired, we already in some point, we, uh, we are in the, uh, shortage of the nutrition right so yeah. when you, you feel thirsty you in some point in some degree you are already dehydrated and the optimum health means we don't get there mm. because down the road we're gonna know and uh, learn more about how much of the deficiency of the nutrition can hurt us before we even notice that that's so good. That is, that is what, you know, all of us in the health field preach. It's prevention 
before correction, right? I mean, um, even the, uh, you know, all of the supplements or even the, the products that I, I love to endorse and I love to endorse people and endorse products, it's about, I mean, it reminds me of this, you know, people used to ask my daughter, she's at 19 and she was using the same products that I was, you know, to, to keep our skin healthy. And people used to say to her all the time, like, why are you using, you know, why are you using an anti-aging cream? And she's like, cause I don't want to wait to look like my mom. And I always say that was funny for like the third time. And after that, not so much, but it is really how we need to think. And I mean, thank you so much. Cause I drink when I'm thirsty. I drink when I'm thirsty, but like you said, you're already in like disease state. You're already depleted. You're already like, or you're waiting and then you get hungry. Um, and if you do that often enough, I mean, it's one thing to get hungry once in a while and miss something cause you're busy or whatever. But if you're always waiting till your body's screaming at you, it's like when people used to come to the clinic and they'd be like, I, I can barely move my neck. You're like, I'm sure your neck talked to you two weeks ago. Right. Absolutely. So what a great, so it's prevention instead yeah. of, you know, yeah. Health is all about uh, uh, prevention to boost, to get the max, not for uh, regain, not for correction, not for going down and find out is wrong and go back, back and forth, back and forth, waste the resources, your life, your time, your money and everything. Right. So uh, I'm going to share you with the important uh, fact about the uh, relation between the oxygen and the cancer. But before that, I want to answer your previous question regards the uh, how these deficiencies de happen. Okay. Let's, because this video regards the oxygen. So I'm going to focus on the oxygen mostly. And I'm going to ask you to do a simple test with me to find out uh, or to uh, bring in your attention how simple we can uh, be uh, uh, deprived deprived of the oxygen. Yeah, oxygen, correct. I know I'm deprived. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, goody, guinea pig day. Okay. All right. So let's move your shoulders forward like you are typing or holding a tablet in your hand. Do a little bit more exaggerate to get the sense sooner. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Like that. You'd be like this, no. right? Yes, like you're typing or you're holding mm -hmm. a tablet in yeah. front of you. So now try to breathe and see how deep you can do it by counting the seconds. Like I did three to four with this. Yeah, you can feel it super tight. Okay. Now let's uh, move your shoulders in a normal state, up, back, down and repeat it again. Oh yeah, whole different ball game. Just, yeah, like, double? Take, oh yeah, absolutely. So this wow. is where the problem starts, our posture. Sitting mm -hmm. these modern day life or even some sleeping habits in the sides, do the same uh, thing. So 24 seven, we are compromising our oxygen intake, mm -hmm. and then we asking why I have these symptoms. It's a start from here, very simple. Wow. Wow. So posture correction, it means doubling the intake of the oxygen, very simple. Maybe you blow your mind that wearing a high heel has effects on the posture and to the forwarded shoulder and the neck. And you can't believe by wearing a high heel or bad posture or walking, you're gonna end up with oxygen deprivation. But it's the truth, how it's linked together everything and cause a symptom that you can't find out even what's the reason or where it's come from. You're right, because you don't think about it. And honestly, there's so many of us, I mean, it's interesting because, well, my work went from one third of flying and on the road to full-time sitting at a desk and you don't even notice it. I mean, you know, like even in the world of massage and how it actually to, to stand up properly and to be in proper position actually feels awkward for most of us. And it feels like we're being obvious. It feels like we're kind of peacocking or something, you know, it's like that. And, on, and I am a huge, I, I've always said, they're gonna, you know, bury me in high heels. 
I feel more comfortable in high heels. Just listening to you talk about that. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm a side sleeper. <laughs> I work at a desk and I wear high heels. Roman, you got your work cut out for you. <laughs> but these are the things that people seven. don't, yeah, the people you don't think you're like, I'm tired. Oh my gosh. It was because I wore my heels yesterday. I've been working at a desk. It's not, it's our, it's our, it's, it's lifestyle, right? Oh my gosh. Okay. So tell us some things we can do. we got to fix this. So that being said, just by these things, we get half of the energy our body can produce. Half wow. of the oxygen, half of the energy. I'm not talking about the disease. I'm not talking about the symptoms. I'm just think, talking about when you said, I'm tired. I don't know why. It's right. the reason. Energy comes from metabolic reactions in our body that oxygen play the first and most important role in it. And the second, as you said, that in regards to transport, the oxygen to the cells or tissues, the importance of the available nutrition in the form of the supplements or something, you said how we can help that? Absolutely. Yeah. Because our foods not necessarily contain all the, all the micro and micronutrients that we required for maximum health. Mm -hmm. So we have to use the supplements mm -hmm. and it's not a bad thing. Of course, it's an option, but even if you think financial wise, spend a little bit to avoid, to prevent a big, big problems down the road that you might never ever, ever, even be able to fix it. It's a good investment, even if, if it's not 100%. If I stand on a soapbox every day and tell people that this body that you have is the most important piece of real estate ever. So if, you know, if it comes to uh, renovating your body versus renovating your bathroom, please make the right choice. You know, people go to stores and they buy pillows or new chairs for the patio because it's the summer, but they're not going to spend money on their brain or on their back or on their nutrition. And I'm just like, people, there's a problem here. Like do both. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, do both, but at the very least, you are your most important piece of real estate because honestly, I've seen it a million times, especially when they brought me into the bank. These people had everything they wanted and they couldn't travel. Like what, what, what's that about? Or people living with certain conditions and not living in optimum health and it affects everything, including their mood. And then, you know, you're tired long enough, you get depressed. You can't travel, you get depressed. You can't pick up your grandkids, you get depressed, right? So. This is a this is a very serious piece of information. Yeah. Very true, very true. It's the only investment that I can guarantee you would never regret it. If you have all <laughs> if you have all the world, world, if you have all the wealth and you have a serious disease, you wouldn't be able to enjoy it. You you, you gave the example. But yeah. if you have optimum health, mental, uh, mind, and soul, you can gain anything in the world as you did in past. You mm -hmm. can redo it more again and again and again. Yeah. So it's very important. Uh, so let's go. Yes, according yeah. to the supplements, so as I mentioned, the iron, vitamins, B12, folic acids, the omega-3, uh, 6, all the essential uh, fatty acids, including the omega-9, are important to help those transport and absorption. Awesome. Awesome. But another important thing is the heart rate. So mm -hmm. to deliver all those good stuffs to your body, most importantly oxygen, you need the strong heartbeats, regular heartbeats, 24-7. And for do so, you need the healthy and a strong heart. And okay. to get there, you need to do the cardio on a daily basis. And when you're doing the cardio, not only you make your heart healthy and strong, but also you intake more oxygen and deliver to the uh, cells in trillion uh, quantities that might in some point during the day you uh, uh, you didn't did well, or there is a, some point of oxygen depreciation, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. By doing the exercise, you can fix it because you increase the heart rate, you push more oxygen in your blood and transport the oxygen to the cells that being needed. So, so I just want to ask a question here because exercise can be such a varied thing for people. Obviously, I'm doing the best that you can with as much as you can. And then there's, the, I've read articles where they're like, women need to do uh, 20 minutes uh, at least three times a week. Men need to do, you know, not as much. There's all sorts of things that we've read. So is there anything just, you know, getting your heart rate up and holding that heart rate for a certain amount of time? Is there some kind of information you can give us about that? Sure. It's a very, very good question that how we can measure where is our heart rate and which heart rate is good for cardio. Right. So <clears throat> uh, to answer these questions, I have to mention it's a one, twice or other day cardio is not enough to maximize your heart health. Something better than nothing. If you are so busy that you can't do it every day, it's good if you do it two, three, or even one times per week, but it's not really do anything magical for you. Right. So uh, I wanna change this vantage point to do what's, what is more important than your health. How much your health or your head worth it? Right. Is it worth it 45 minutes dedicated to cardio or no? If right. you think your head worthy for that, please put in your daily schedule 45 minutes fast walking. When we're talking about the fast walking, it's like four to six kilometers uh, per hour. Uh, that you can measure a distance that be, fits in this range and do it in one hour. Your heart rate should be reached to the 120 to 140 range, depends on it, your age, your gender, and your uh, athlete level. Mm -hmm. So sedentary people would have more uh, heart rate range than the athletes. Right. But, but the, another thing you can measure is when you are in this range that also called fat burning zone, uh, you have the you wouldn't be able to talk continuously. You need to take a breath like every two three words. You can't make a long sentences while you are walking and talking. It's another <laughs> measure that you know. I'm in, I'm so in trouble. I'm so in trouble. <laughs> I talk all the time. I heels. <laughs> Talk. I got if, I got work to do people who's on who's on the train with me <laughs> <laughs> so if you can talk like long sentences without briefing in between your heart rate most likely around 100 or under that bit per seconds so when you have to increase your speed until you reach to the point you wouldn't be able to talk more than like three words in a row and then you need the breath Oh my, I got some work to do. I got some work to do. So, you know, here's what well, that's an interesting piece because a lot of us, particularly in the last couple of years, you know, we did a lot of walking because we just wanted to get out and, you know, we had lots of things. And, and so a lot of us would walk with friends. I mean, I walk with my girlfriend, Tammy, you know, and we chit chat the whole time. Now we did some duration, but we chit chatted the whole time. You know, one of us was talking, the other one was talking. I don't think we ever got to a place where we couldn't talk. So um, it's, it, that's a good indication. It's just that everyday knowledge that's easy as a barometer, right? So, you know, I don't have Not, one of those, you know, things like, oh, my heart rate right now. You know, we're just, everyone's just kind of getting, trying to get what we can, when we can, and if we can. So that's really good to know. Uh, I, I, don't, I didn't say that you wouldn't be able to talk because then your heart rate should be right in range of the 170, 180 beat per seconds. Oh, wow. And too much for walking. It should yeah. be you run to get there. But I'm saying three words, max four words in a row without breathing in between. Right. So right. keep it in mind. Uh, yes, it's, I, I, I think I, I answered some of your questions. Absolutely. That's, that's and, great information to take in and just stop that, start that adaptation, right? So I think, again, the more information that we know, and look at this is just a piece of what you know. I mean, you are a plethora. It's like you're an encyclopedia of knowing all of these things. And I know that, I mean, we work one-on-one -on -one together and 
the nice thing is that, you know, you're kind of giving me the information based on my lifestyle and we're, we're working it in, you know, in increments to get us to where we need to get it to go. You know, I have a particular goal in mind, but really the goal, whether I'm raising money or not raising money is kind of raising my body's level of health. And as someone who is, let's say, you know, on the other side of five, you know, on the other side of five, <laughs> I'll just go there. Um, I don't know about anybody else, but I think it's pretty common knowledge that the more we get wiser, I'm not going to say older. I'm going to say the more we get wiser, um, it's harder. Like it's harder. And the demands of life are different, you know, like whether we're in the peak of our career or what have you, like, I can't, you know, I can't do what I used to do. You hear that all the time. I can't do what I used to do. So the body is also having its own experience from being on the planet for a while. And um, it, it takes a little bit more dedication for sure. I, that's what I find anyway. So the more information that can instill in us to do the right things at the right time is so important. But I, I, I mean, I've always been a believer in working with someone personally like yourself, not just in a situation like this, I mean, everything, because it's you and you, you know, I mean, it's you and you like, that's kind of mostly what we're up against, particularly when we want to make changes. So, right. well, I'm looking forward to our, our next class. I know that we're going to talk about, Oh, I need right. to sharing one more topics regards yeah. the relation between the oxygen and the cancer before we finish this video. Oh, fantastic. And Thank we might uh, blow our minds in some point that bring more uh, curiosity about learning about oxygen or pay attention to have a deep breath and right frequency to support our health or boost our health or in the worst case, regain it. So one of the most important things to understand about the cancer or the fact behind the cancer is that there is a one and only one primary mechanism that has ever been proven to trigger a normal human cell to cancerous is the oxygen deprivation. Wow. So that oh, goes okay. there, that 24-7 uh, compromising the oxygen intake can end up to serious problems like the cancer. Cancer, above all other disease, uh, has countless secondary causes of course, but uh, the prime cause of the cancer is replacement of the cellular oxygen respiration by your fermentation of the sugar. So when you don't have enough oxygen in the cell, put the cell in a position in the situation that the uh, fermentation of the sugar replaces it with the oxygen in the chemical boundaries. And it caused serious problem for the cell that can end it to the cancer. And when it starts, make it control, it will not be easy. Wow. Uh, so the only, wow. So I'm kind of, that's, that's pretty shocking. And I don't know why I didn't know that. There's two things, but so having oxygenated cells is a considerable form of preventative health, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So it stops the fermentation, is that? No, no, when there is a shortage, lack of the oxygen oh. at cellular level, right. it makes the cell crazy by happening those chemical bonds okay. from the fermentation of the sugar. Okay. Okay, okay. So it's another reason we don't want too much sugar in our blood, mm -hmm. but there is a much more causes than that we're gonna, uh, we're gonna talk about it later. Wow, wow. So, well, that's a powerful note to end on. So um, if that, that would inspire me, I think they call that a cliffhanger in, uh, in soap operas, right? So uh, thank you so much for that. That's a big one to really to sit and think with and um, that should inspire you, honestly. I would just be calling you. So, um, okay. So until next week, everybody, thank yeah. you. Uh, thank you, Raman, for sharing so generously of your time and your knowledge, um, because you're clearly an expert in this and that's, you know, it's just so generous of you. So thank you so much. And everybody, we will see you again next week.